So hello everybody, my name's Paul Mendelssohn, I'm Chief Executive of CODE and I'd like to tell you about the duty of candour regulations, the new requirements from the Care Quality Commission and also um, how we meet these requirements with iComply, with the CODE iComply application. And I think you'll find both aspects of this presentation uh, helpful and informative. As everybody knows, there are new CQC reg uh, reg regulations that came into force in November last year um, and it's an act of parliament and um, we can see from the old fundamental standard, the old uh, essential standards of quality and safety that came out in 2010, we now have the fundamental standards which, um, which really apply to us from April 2015, April this year. And there are two completely new standards in the fundamental standards. There's regulation five, fit and proper persons regulation for directors and regulation 20, the duty of candour. So, two new regulations, duty of candour is one of them. Published in November 2014, um, the duty of candour regulations state a health service body, in this case, a health service body means anybody providing healthcare, primary healthcare, must act in, in healthcare, not primary healthcare, must act in an open and transparent way with relevant persons in relation to their care and treatment provided. Um, and in this particular point for the duty of candour, as soon as reasonably practicable, after becoming aware that a notifiable safety incident has occurred, a health service body must notify the relevant person and provide reasonable support. That's the beginning of Regulation 20, which is uh, quite a long regulation for something that's completely new. And in fact, most of the things in the duty of candour we've already been doing, but it formalises um, what it formalises what we now need to do to meet the regulations and as you know the regulations are now law if you are in England and you're registered with the Care Quality Commission it's law that you meet the regulations so let's have a look there's some uh, draft guidance some consultation guidance which is probably going to be fairly sim similar to the final version which is the guidance um, for providers on meeting the fundamental standards and if we look at Regulation 20 in this guidance, and you can download this guidance from the CQC website, um, it details the components of the regulation and how you meet them, and it makes it look quite complicated. And when you read through it, there are a lot of points. Um, and so what we do at CODE is we take this, um, these complicated regulations and we simplify them into a module. And in, in this case, it's a new Duty of Candor module that comes out today in iComply application. Um, and a new policy, which is duty of candor policy. So we have a new module and a new policy that simplifies these regulations, but I just want to explain what, what they boil down to, what the requirements boil down to, to make it clear for you. So, in a nutshell, duty of candor means that you must have a being open culture. Now, being open is an NHS requirement that's been around for quite some time. So we already have, code members already have a being open policy that they follow. I'll talk a little bit about being open later. Now, there's a number of events in dentistry, particularly in the NHS, and I'll talk about them in a few minutes, but we have significant events, serious untoward incidents, and safety incidents. And they need to be reported to different people at different times. But what we're talking about under the duty of candor is notifying the relevant person. So we're not talking about notifying the National Patient Safety Agency, for example, or the MHRA, but the actual person themselves. And then we need to keep also uh, very good records. So the regulations of duty candor are around a safety incident, as it's called, as well as an obligation to act in a more open and transparent way towards patients in relation to all of their care and, and treatment. So a safety incident then, an NHS, the NHS description of a safety incident is an incident that's unintended or, or unexpected that could or did lead to harm to the patient. And safety incidents have to be reported. We already have a policy on safety incident reporting, um, M233SIR, and primarily you would report a safety incident to the National Patient Safety Agency, the NSPA, National Patient Safety Agency. 
Um, and you can find them online and there's their reporting forms there. And in some cases you have to report safety incidents to the MHRA. However, what this is talking about is reporting to the actual person that was involved in the incident. So if a patient, some harm happened to a patient, you need to report to that patient themselves. And that's why it gets a little bit confusing because there are different types of incidents in dentistry, because there are different definitions. Um, we just need to clarify exactly you know, what it is that we report to the person involved and when, and then separate that from what needs to be reported to the MHRA or the NSPA or even the Care Quality Commission, because there are reporting guidelines to the Care Quality Commission as well. So a lot of reporting to be done. We're talking particularly in duty of candor now about what needs to be reported to the person involved. So we call them the relevant person or the service user. So if there's been an unintended incident, a safety incident that led to harm, and it was during the provision of the regulated activity, of the activity that you're regulated for, then if this has caused either the death of the service user, um, where the death relates directly to the incident, or severe harm, moderate harm, or prolonged psychological harm. Now, th there are very clear definitions of severe harm, moderate harm, and prolonged psychological harm. And you'll find those definitions uh, in the code module. We'll just touch on them later. But this is when you want to, when you have to report then to the person who's involved in that incident. And incidentally, if the person who's involved lacks mental capacity, you then need to report to the person who supports them, or perhaps to their family. Um, and if the person has unfortunately um, passed away, then you need to report to the next of kin or whoever would be relevant to report to. And that's why it's called the relevant person. So you have to report a safety incident that caused these things, severe harm, moderate harm, or prolonged psychological harm or death to the person themselves, as well as your other reporting requirements. So when you notify, so we now know the duty, we, need, we know we need to be open. We know that we need to notify the person involved or the people who support them, if that's necessary, about the incident. We know what incidents we have to report. The next thing is, what do we actually have to do? And a lot of these things we do anyway, but for example, you need to give an apology in person. These are all listed in the uh, CQC um, guidelines. So it's, it's all completely prescriptive. You have to provide a single point of contact to deal with incidents. And we do that anyway in a dental practice as a matter of course. Um, you have to provide the outcomes in writing and you have to keep full of course of redoing everything uh, contemporaneous records. You have to respond in an appropriate and timely manner. So we now know that we have to notify. There are very clear definition of how we have to notify um, the person who's involved in this safety incident. And we know who we have to notify. And we know that we have to keep full and clear records. Now, because duty of candor is quite a broad um, subject, it does cover uh, a number of different areas. And so whilst in the modules itself, we talk about when you have to notify, who you have to notify, how you have to notify under the duty of candor. We also refer to other important um, guidelines and procedures in the practice that relate to the duty of candor. So for example, your complaints procedure is very important because your complaints procedure, the code complaints procedure, you respond in a timely manner, you have a single point of contact and so on. Um, you provide the results of your analysis. So it, it follows the duty of candor requirements. Significant events procedure is for reporting significant events, um, which are slightly different from safety incidents. I won't go into it just now. And uh, serious incident policy for, re for reporting serious incidents, as well as our general patient care policy and the being open policy. So all of these policies and procedures, they actually all connect to the duty of candor. We haven't re rewritten them all in the, in, in the requirements, in the duty of candor module, 
but they're all relevant. Um, and as you, as you progress in your year of Icon Play application, you will be touching on each of those areas because the application brings to your attention the review of, the checking of these different areas. Now what I'd like to do is, I'd like to go to the application just now and I'd like to show you how you will review the duty of candor in iComply application so that you know what we do and I also at the same time will show you the duty of candor module, the new module and also the new duty of candor policy because these you need to adapt and adopt um, really straight away and I'll explain what we're doing in iComply about that as well. So I'm going to just now switch screens. Okay, so um, here we have the iComply application. Um, I'm sure that many of you have seen it now. And when you first come to the application, you see your dashboard. And in the dashboard, there'll be some alerts at the top of the dashboard. So you can see here a new module, Duty of Candor, has been created. A new module, Directors, Fit and Proper Check and Action List, has been created. So we're telling you here what's new, it's very important. Down here is the news and then we have our practices and I have three practices on my um, dashboard. Lewis Dental Care, Alfred Road Dental Practice and Sidmouth Dental Health. And of these three practices, I've just set this one up, Lewis Road, Den Lewis Dental Care. I've got no activities due yet this week and I've got no overdue activities. But these are all my activities in the cycle and I can see here it's beginning to show the new modules. Just to show you on an older practice, this is probably the oldest because they're just, they're not real practices, of course. Um, in Sidmouth Dental Health, I've got loads and loads of overdue activities, so I've been quite naughty on this one. And uh, I've got loads of activities due, and then I've got more new modules because this practice was put, was uploaded, was created after these modules were created, so they don't show up in the new practice if they're already there when you start. Anyway, so there's your new modules. I just want to say that a um, little bit of housekeeping for those of you with iComply is do make sure from time to time that you go into updates to new modules. Decide if you need to do them now because remember they're all scheduled in iComply. We're just telling you that they're new. Um, and mostly you won't need to look at them just now. So you can just dismiss them. You can just click on here and go into those modules and dismiss them from this particular area. And that just cleans up that box. And then you'll know when something's new and it's new, new. So that's just reminding you that there are new modules that yes, you're going to be told about it in iComply, but um, you may or may not want to review it now. You probably won't if you don't just dismiss it from that box. So I'm now going to um, go into uh, the Lewis Road Dental Practice and show you how we look at and what we do with the duty of candor when we review it, how to review it. So uh, this is a new, new calendar, it starts next month. Um, I don't know where duty of candor is on the calendar, so I can just search for my activity on the calendar and I'll just put it in here. Duty, there it is, duty of candor. This will bring up the activity. Um, so it's a compliance review on the duty of candor. And it says, it gives the description here, the CQC standard for the duty of candor requires you to have an open and honest culture and so on. It says, see the duty of candor overview, M291 for full details. And it says also you'll find the duty of candor policy. It also says incidentally, where we should file them. And we say we should file the policy in folder seven and the procedure in folder nine. This is the code folder system for those of you that don't know it. It's a complete folder management system for all the documentation. So when you go into administration step, in this case on the duty of candor, the first thing that you'll probably do is you'll look in related templates and you'll find here the two, the policy and the procedure, the two templates that I was talking about. So if we first of all look at the duty of candor procedure, which is this one, I'm going to download it to my computer. So. In the duty of candor procedure that I've downloaded then from iComply, um, here are the general points. The provider has to make sure that it has an open and honest culture. Have to tell people in a timely manner when particular incidents have occurred. Provide in writing a truthful account of the incident and an explanation about the inquiries and investigations. Offer an apology in writing. Provide reasonable support and keep written records of the incident. 
So when you review a code module, what you do is you basically, you'll get the module, you'll download the module as I did, and then you check that it fits with what you do at the practice, and it fits with your understanding and your, your necessity to meet the regulations because it can vary from practice to practice. So you will adopt the, the you will adopt it. You look at it, you'll check it, you'll make sure it's correct in your view and it fits your practice, you might make some changes. And then once you've got it, you'll save it somewhere. We recommend that people save these documents on Dropbox incidentally, or a similar cloud, um, cloud storage. And when you do save it, great idea to put your own logo on it too, because then you really can see that you've changed it. And change the file name, but don't change it totally. You see, the file name of this document is M291 Duty of Candor version one. Now I would leave all of that and I would add something to the end that's yours because you want to keep the integrity of the file names so that you can refer to them and the version number in particular. So we've looked at the module, we've downloaded the template from within iComply, we've looked at it, we downloaded the Duty of Candor um, module and the Duty of Candor policy and we look at them. Let's have a quick look at the policy just to be, just to see what we would do with that, which is exactly the same. We look at the policy and it gives us an overview. It says what we do to meet the duty of candor requirements in the practice. And you read through it, you check it and see if there's any changes that you need to make. You might do things differently to this and then you save it in your location, wherever you save it. Now we often, we recommend that you save paper documents in the code folder set because it's great to have a paper set but save the digital versions in Dropbox. So you review these uh, policy and procedure in this case and when you've reviewed it you come back to iComply so we go back to our activity and we close the activity. Now what we'll say then is any necessary templates have been downloaded and reviewed, templates have been updated and amended as required any actions arising from templates have been carried out because many of these templates will give you checklists or action lists to follow to meet requirements. And then you can say what evidence you have. Well, what I, the evidence that I have, I have a duty of candor policy. Oops, let's have a lowercase a. And I have a duty of candor procedure. And they are stored in folder, well, the policy is in folder nine, folder seven. And the procedure is in folder nine. These are where I'm storing them. I then mark that activity as complete. And I have now closed the activity on my iComply um, calendar. And when I later come and look at my compliance report, you won't be able to see it just now, I can filter the report by the 2015 fundamental standards so I can see how my compliance meets those standards. I can show it by regulation. And I will show on this report what activity I've done to meet regulation 20. That's a compliance report and it shows how you meet the fundamental standards. So that's how you review duty of candor. Just as I'd like to say something now for code members. This is the iComply dashboard and it has certain functionality. All code members will be using the iComply dashboard to download their management modules. You'll be coming here, you'll be automatically redirected, you'll need to log in and give a new username and password. And to download modules, we call them templates in iComply, you just basically go to template documents and you can search for them from here or you can search for them by searching here. Different ways to search, slightly different categories, but they're all there and more. And so code members will be using iComply. You won't have iComply functionality. You won't be able to, it won't schedule your activities or manage your compliance or produce compliance report, but you will be able to use the interface and you'll have the news. And one of the great things you'll have as a code member, which I think could be really useful for you, is this thing here, the updated and new modules. So you'll know, without us telling you, without us writing to you, what's new and what you have to review. There won't be a scheduled review for you, you can just go in and review it.